when we all see Jesus, we'll sing and shout. Last verse, onward to the prize. On. Okay, thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. God bless you. God bless you. Good morning, church. Good morning, church. Guess what? Today's no ordinary Sabbath. Oh, really? It's Children's Day. It's Children's Day? Yeah. Really? What's Children's Day? Children's Day is when the parents get to switch roles with the children. Oh, wow. I like that. So whether you come from near or far, let everyone at Calvary praise the Lord. Amen. I'm happy that the children are switching. Now we get a chance to praise the Lord. Do you like that? Yes. Okay. So I heard there are some birthdays, Peyton. Yeah. Do you know whose birthdays there are? No. No? Would you like me to tell you? Yes. Okay. So we have some March birthdays, like Michael Goodman, who's on the 30th. But there are some April birthdays. Oh. Mm, Shakima Davis and Alan Porter share a birthday on the 3rd. We have Josette Jackson on the 5th. Mm. And guess who Pastor gets to share a birthday with? 
the one and only Nathan Shaw. They share a birthday on April 4th. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. That is very nice. Mm -hmm. So, how can people watch church, though? We have all these birthdays, and it's Children's Day, but what if not everyone can be here? They can watch the live stream. They can watch the live stream. Church, if you do go look on the website, you are able to click a couple links because, you know, we're tech savvy ever, ever since COVID. You can kick a, click a couple links and you can see on the YouTube, you can watch the live and you could even go on Zoom, give us a shout, say hi. But, you know, how will people be able to see the YouTube live stream? They can click a couple links, but what if it doesn't show up on their feed? Is there a way that we can let the people know? They can share with other people. Oh, they can share with other people. You have the ability to share the YouTube with your friends and family, like the video, and even subscribe. Mm -hmm. There are a lot of views, but we are hoping for some more. Yep. Thank you, church, for coming in and watching church today. We are asking that we have multiple people on the live, multiple people on Zoom. Today is Children's Day, so please stay tuned. Pastor, you are very lucky you don't have to preach today because <laughs> it is very early that you're not preaching, but we have some other preachers here today. Yep. Happy Sabbath, everyone. Happy Sabbath, everyone. stand. I just saw you talk. We set a work aside. We leave our cares behind on this day of Sabbath rest. On this Come, let us sing for joy to the Lord. Let us shout aloud to the rock of our salvation. 
Let us come before him with thanksgiving and exalt him with music and song. For the Lord is the great God, the great king above all gods. In his hands are the depths of the earth and the mountain peaks belong to him. The sea is his, for he made it. And his hands formed the giant land. Come, let us bow down in worship. Let us kneel before our Lord the Maker. The church is now called to worship. Amen. Father, I pray that you will help us in everything that we will do and all that we already have done there, Father. I pray that you will help us in anything that we would need. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Congregation, be seated. Praise the Lord. Happy Sabbath, church. God is good. And all the time, God is good. It is such a joy to be in the house of the Lord this morning, to magnify his name, and to worship him. It is a greater joy to see our little ones leading out Amen. so ably Amen. this morning. I have been here since Sabbath school, and you couldn't tell that they are not seasoned <laughs> in what they're doing. You know, and as I continue to observe, I can't help but acknowledge the solemnity of the call to worship and the invocation. Our children here at Calvary know how to represent the Lord. Amen. Yes, and for that I say, to God be the glory. And I want to give God thanks for the parents and the children's ministries, teens, and the members who Find the, each opportunity to encourage and to strengthen the children of the church as they continue to grow in grace. A little later, I will tell you a story about the first time I was supposed to preach at a children's ministry's <laughs> Sabbath. <laughs> you could never tell. But I... I'm, it's good to see all of you, brothers and sisters. 
And I've had the joy of seeing some of you in the week, some of you here at church, some of you uh, at your homes, and it's such a joy to see you. We have come into his house. We've gathered in his name to worship Christ our Lord. And this morning, I have just a few announcements so that I don't cut too deeply into our children's ministries program. Uh, I want to remind the church that this coming Wednesday night is going to be the first, first Wednesday night of April. And of such, we're going to be having Wednesday night meeting online with the wider New England South Church community, all our sister churches in this part of the vineyard. We're going to be online together, and this Wednesday night, we're going to be having the first elders from three of our churches doing what you call a relay sermon. Yes, they're going to be a sermonic tag team this Wednesday night, and our first elder is one of the speakers, and so I'm going to ask the tech team to drop the uh, flyer on the screen. Yes. And so this is invitation to all our members. You already have the Zoom link. If you don't, it will be recent on our Slack pa uh, platform. Or, and, and by the way, I noted that a number of our members are not a part of the Slack community. Uh, that's an app, by the way. Yes. And so I'm asking you as best as possible. It is a community that has been created for us to connect as a church body. So when we want to send out a communique for the whole population of our church to be advised or informed, we have that community created on the Slack app where we can drop the notifications. All right? And so if you are not yet a part of this, the, the Slack community, please reach out to the communication department, Brother St. Cloud, or any other of the team members so that you can be enlisted on the same. So the link will be posted there uh, again as we draw closer to this Wednesday evening. But I'm anticipating that all our members will be there on Wednesday night on this Zoom platform so that Calvary shows up strong. Hello? Yes. Following that, I had announced last quarter that this new quarter, which begins uh, on Monday, 1st of April, that we're returning to physical Wednesday night meetings. Some of you were so anxious that you were here on Wednesday night before the last Wednesday night. And I, I want to apologize if I wasn't clear, but I'm also happy. It's a good sign. <laughs> you know, but on Wednesday night, the 10th, we will be here for physical Wednesday night meeting, and the Family Life Department will be championing that cause for us on Wednesday night, the 10th. So we won't be on, on, on at home on Zoom on Wednesday night the 10th. We're going to be here. And the other Wednesday nights of the month of April will also be in the physical space. But then again, on the first Wednesday night of May, we'll be back with the New England South community for the joint Wednesday night meeting on Zoom. Then all the other Wednesday nights in May will be in-house. I hope you get the pattern that the first Wednesday night of each month, we will be on Zoom with the Greater New, with the New York, this New England South, oh Jesus, the New England South community, church community. But then the other Wednesday nights in the month, we will be in house. Is that clear, brethren? All right. I hope it is. All right. I also want to 
remind you, give me the next flyer on screen, please, that our evangelism weekend is... Thank you so much. Our evangelism weekend is weekend coming. That's next weekend. Yes. Yes. April 5 to 7, right here at Calvary on the church grounds. We'll be here Friday night, Sabbath, and Sunday night. And our speaker, as you can see on screen, will be... Pastor DeMarley Williams, and I am inviting all our members. Our theme is evangelism, the heartbeat of mission. And as we prepare, brothers and sisters, for our uh, evangelistic crusade, our series in, on the, the 13th of July to the 17th of August, I invite you to share with us in these pockets of revival and evangelism on the first weekends of each, each month, all right? So let me just confirm that it is the, the 13, July 13 to August 17. That's the date for our um, crusade effort. And that's going to be out in Waterbury, I understand. Yes, with, the, with all the other churches that are a part of the New England South Territory. So again, please mark the dates. That's July 13 to August 17. We'll be having this joint evangelistic campaign out in Waterbury, and we are a part of that community effort. All right. The media ministry team of our church is recruiting volunteers. We do not just want to have our services online. We want to be engaged in rigorous media ministry. And media ministry requires more than just broadcasting what is happening. And so we are seeking for, we know our young people are very good with technology. It's a part of their, of their <laughs> natural <laughs> makeup. <laughs> and so we're throwing out a recruitment drive to our youth and others who are technologically inclined to uh, share your giftedness with the media team so that we can give of our best to the master in, as we engage in media ministry. All right? On last Sabbath evening, we had our church bowling night at, uh, at, the, at Nutmeg. And, uh, and I was there. Yeah, I was not just there, <laughs> but I was bowling, and those who were paying attention know that while Wint and his team were in the, the seven and six hundreds in points, I won't tell you where my team was, but I won in, in, <laughs> in my lane. <laughs> And we had a wonderful fellowship. We had a wonderful, wonderful fellowship out there. I didn't know that Sister McLean was so strong. <laughs> you know, <laughs> she, she was striking. Praise God. <laughs> but it was a wonderful experience. And I look forward to us as a church family carving out more opportunities to fellowship, to bond together. Because as we fellowship together, we worship better together. Praise God. And so we had a wonderful time. Thanks to men's ministries and women's ministries department. There will be a community services um, meeting immediately following divine service today. 
for all members of the community services department and volunteers. All right. Uh, reminding you as well that the New England South Singles Worship and Mingle Sabbath is also this coming Sabbath, April 6th, at the Omega Seventh-day Adventist Church in New Haven. And there's another, give me the last flyer, please. That's the Youth Week of Prayer for the, um, championed by the New England South Youth Federation. It's going to be virtual all week from the 30. First of March, that's tomorrow, until the 5th of April, but then they culminate on the 6th with physical worship at, at um, Mount Zion, Seventh-day Adventist Church out in Hamden, all right? But that's a very popular, the 6th of April is a very popular date. And I want you to pay attention to everything that will, happening, that will be happening on that date so that you, your priorities are straight. But young people, this is a tailored initiative. Their Zoom link will also be made available to our community so that as best as possible our youth can connect Whenever during the course of this week you find the opportunity, so to do uh, for the Youth Week of Prayer. All right. Finally, every first Sabbath is also recognized as prayer and fasting. And here, whereas it begins... On a personal level, here at 2 p.m., uh, the corporate half of that prayer and fasting convenes. In addition to that, each Sunday morning, the prayer team leads prayer and fasting from 8 a.m. to 11 a.m. And printed in your bulletin, is the information necessary. As we prepare for the evangelistic outreach that we have been mentioning, let's remember, brothers and sisters, that public evangelism is a perfect opportunity for public failure if there is no private preparation. I'm going to say that again. That public evangelism is a perfect opportunity for public failure if there is no private preparation preparation. Billy Graham, one of Christian, the Christian community's most effective evangelists, Billy Graham says that public evangelism is large-scale one-on-one evangelism. If we all come together, but we all bring nobody, then nobody will be reached. But when each one brings one and we come together, then that's fertile soil for reaping. I have finally a, prayer, a few prayer requests. We still have members who are grieving the loss of loved ones. We have members who are ailing. We had at least three uh, medical procedures done within our church family during the course of this week. And all of them as I have uh, had the reports, our praise reports. God is good to us. And I love to hear the testimonies of answered prayers. Can't say it enough. It doesn't have to be my prayer. I just love to hear that God did it. And that makes a world of difference even as we wait on the Lord. And so I'm going to engage the church in a season of prayer at this time as we present the needs of our church family to the Lord and the needs of each individual members. We present those who are grieving the loss of loved ones and those who are out, because I, I think Sister Thompson is in Jamaica at this moment, preparing to funeralize uh, her loved one tomorrow down in St. James. 
and Elder Bray is, his mother was hospitalized and so he is not here today because he went to, to visit with his mother. All the others that I do not know, our prayers and our love is also with you. And so I'm going to invite the church to join me in standing as we sing souls in that's pass me not let's sing the first stanza and chorus pass me not O gentle savior then would you hold the hand of the person beside you as we engage in a season of prayer mm. pass me not O gentle Come on and hear my heart. Oh, cry. Oh, cry. Oh, mother. Thou art calling. Calling. Oh, do. Do not pass. stanza one more time. Pass me not. Today, somebody sing Savior. of the person beside you, hold a prayer partner, the church is at prayer, this season of prayer, forget about yourself, pray for the person whose hands you're holding, I want the whole church to be at prayer in this moment, that the presence of the Lord can be felt in this place today.
our Father and our friend. In the stillness of this moment, we stretch our hands to you. For we've been around and we know no other help. And if you should draw yourself from us, Heavenly Father, to whom and where shall we go? This moment, we thank you so much for the praise reports that you have given to your children. For Lord, thou knowest that if I'm down in a pit and I hear you just took my neighbor out of one, then hope is kept alive. And so we thank you for the testimonies that you have given to our neighbors, our fellow brothers and sisters in this community of believers. We present to you those who are mourning the loss of loved ones. Some are burdened beyond words. Some are confused. Some are questioning the very belief they have in you. But we know that you are God. And that the foolishness of God is wiser than the wisdom of men. And so God, while some are confused, some are depressed, and some are angry with you, we pray, God, that in your mercy, you will visit them with compassion and hug them so close that they can feel heaven's heartbeat. We pray for understanding towards our human folly. Because we cannot by searching find you out, God. On our best day, at the peak of human intellect, we cannot understand your doings. So forgive us, Father. I beg you. And visit us in mercy. I pray for those of our members who are ill those who have fallen ill suddenly and those whose illness has been gradual. I pray, God, that if we, if our healing necessitates lifestyle changes, that you will give us the wisdom so to do. But I pray, God, that if our healing is in need, is, is, is the need for spiritual warfare, if it is, God, that the devil has laid hands of affliction upon your children, I ask that Michael will stand up, great God of Israel, and vindicate your character by liberating your people from the oppressive hands of the devil. I pray for this church, Heavenly Father, for this church militant, must become the church triumphant. We languish, O oh Lord, we often relent and regress. But you are our God. You are our God. And the state of your church speaks to the kind of God you are. And so I ask God that you will set your church yourself. I ask God for every area of weakness of your church that you'll give us strength. For every area of lacking or need, may you indicate that you are still the God who provides. Amen. You are still the God who supplies. Oh God, deal well with your church, I beg you. Let the heathen behold that our God still cares for his own. Lord, continue to bless your church. Let none who wait upon you be disappointed because of us, O oh God. 
but straighten us out. I pray for the children of this church in a very special way as we have come for children's Sabbath. I pray, God, that you'll build edges of protection around them. Build walls of fire around them, mighty God. In this day and age, they need it, Father. And so I beg you, Jesus, so to do. I pray that you'll protect them, Jesus. Preserve them. Prosper them. And bless them, mighty God. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. All right. So, my time is done. And... Uh, are happy in the Lord this morning and I want to acknowledge all our new believers who are in the house I see sister T celebrating <laughs> when you reach if you're baptized and you're happy say amen. amen and it is no secret because I also saw her celebrating on the church YouTube channel <laughs> she sent in a, a comment this week giving God thanks and celebrating with the church that she is born again. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. I met some friends this week, and now it is their time. It's their time. So my friends who have their little ones to be blessed today are going to come at this time as we sing... When he cometh, when he cometh, to make up his jewels. All right, so those who have the babies to be blessed are going to be coming. Family Life Department is going to be escorting them. And the supporters who are here can also accompany them. So 
just stand where you are if you are here with a baby to be blessed. When he cometh, when he cometh to make up his jewel, all his jewel, precious jewel, his love and his own. Like the stars of the morning, his bright crowns adorning, they shall shine in their beauty, bright gems for his crown. He will gather, he will gather the gems for his kingdom. All the pure ones, all the bright ones, his love and his born. Like the stars of the morning, his bright brown adorning, they shall shine in their beauty, bright gems for his crown. Little children, little children, Inviting all my elders who are here, all my elders who are here, join me up here. Oh, like the star of the morning, his bright crown adorning, they shall shine in their beauty, bright gems for his crown. Like the stars of the morning, his bright, come right up the platform, Ellis. They shall shine in their beauty, bright gems for his crown. Praise God. Praise God. What an august occasion. And uh, it is such a joy to see so many who have come to join these parents in returning to the Lord the bundles of joy that he has blessed them with. And, and I feel beside myself right now. And so I'm going to make a very presumptuous ask that all of you who are not members here, I'd love to be your pastor. Amen. All of you who are not members here yet, I, I'd love to be your pastor. And so, <laughs> if you don't yet have a church family, then this is your new church family. Amen. So whenever you feel like you want to be in the presence of the Lord, our doors here at Calvary are always open to have you worshiping the Lord with us in the beauty of holiness. And so we have three little ones to be dedicated to the master. And I told the mothers this week that I would ask them to pronounce the, the names for me so that I do not mess up any of them. Um, but they are not difficult. Uh, not, at least not the first ones. <laughs> not too difficult. Not too difficult. Uh, give me a little more juice on this microphone, please. Let me have the mummies to say the names of the little ones. This is Kayla, Kayla Brown, and I'm her mom, Takia Brown. All right, that's little Kayla. Praise God. And then, this is Ariana Campbell, and I'm her mom, Melissa Campbell. That's right. Praise God. This is Mariah Lee, and I'm Amila Scarlett, her mom. Praise God. You see, one of the things I want you to note is that I already said I would ask the mummies to <laughs> call the names, but they would boldly declare <laughs> that I am her mom. <laughs> you know? 
And I already um, gave some big ups to the, the gentlemen who were standing with the ladies this week when we had consultation. And uh, yes. And also, I knew that one would be absent, but I had also indicated that we would stand in solidarity of support. Is it Kayla? Yes. Yes. With and for Kayla and her mom. It is our pleasure, uh, my brothers and sisters, and baby dedication is one of my favorite ecclesiastical functions of the church. Because I cannot but remember the story of Anna. Anna struggled to give birth. She had a, a problem, a fertility issue. And her, her, unfortunately, she wasn't the only wife at home. And the other wife, Benina, was fruitful. The, the husband just need to touch her and she's pregnant. <laughs> and she would rub it in Anna's face. She would haunt Anna with it. But Anna knew that the fruit of the womb comes only from God. And the Bible said she prayed and fasted. And I don't know exactly how she was behaving, but the Bible says, based on how she was behaving in the church, one day the pastor saw her and said, you're drunk already? And <laughs> but she said, I'm not drunk. I'm a woman desperately seeking of God the fruit of the womb. And God answered her prayer. And she said to God, if you give me a child, I will give him back to you. And all these mothers throughout the ages who have taken their little ones to be blessed and dedicated to the Lord have followed the example of Anna. And and bring their little ones to Jesus. And I always take a lot of time to do baby dedication because I remember when Jesus was doing a, a one and the disciples said, Master, you're taking too long with the children. The service is bigger than children. You, you're taking too long. You need to just give them a little story and then, <laughs> you know, move on to the weightier matters. But Jesus said, you're missing the picture. These children are the standard that you must meet in order to get to heaven. You must become like little children. So he said, suffer the little children to come to me. And do not stand in their way. Because you must become like a little child in order to get to heaven. And I know we often think about that within the context of how forgiving children are. They go to school and they are playing and somebody hurt them or a peer says some, something that's not nice and they cry and then they, they come home to the adults who are their parents and because adults are different from children, they all say, don't play with that one again. But as soon as they go back to school tomorrow morning, they are playing together again. You know, that's one of the things that Jesus said you cannot be adults in human relationship in order to, you're not to be childish. Yeah. We are to be childlike Amen. in order to be saved. We must be forgiving. But the other thing is Jesus was saying to the adults, you must arrive at childlike dependence on God. Childlike trust in God in order to get to heaven. Right. Anywhere you take it, anyhow you look at it, without care, a child is helpless and will not make it. And God is saying, listen, you must admit that you cannot be saved by yourself. No matter how good you are, 
no matter how self-righteous you are, you cannot be saved in your own strength. For all righteousness is as filthy rags. All right. I always share Psalm 127, verse 1. It says, except the Lord build the house, they labor in vain that build it. Except the Lord watch the city, the watchman, he waketh but in vain. And this is a psalm that was written by Solomon, wisest man, most erudite poet in scripture. And while he's talking here, he uses a metaphor of construction, but Solomon is not dealing with engineering. He doesn't know much about building. What he does is uses the metaphor to get a message across. He likens the family structure to the erection of a building. And he says, except the Lord build the city, except the Lord is the author of your family structure, Except the Lord build the house. They labor in vain who build it. And then he says, except the Lord keep the city. The watchman is on duty, but in vain. Our families, it's becoming more and more obvious, whether you're religious or not, that our families are endangered with the current temperature of sociology. Our families are endangered. But there is a refuge in Jesus. He is the author of human family life. He can sustain what he initiated and he says he will never forsake his investment. And so parents and well-wishers and family members and friends, I give you Jesus as foundation for your family life. I give you Jesus as protection. One of the man's duties is to protect his family. But he needs protection. And so I give you Jesus. I give you Jesus, parents, to protect your little ones from dangers that are unseen. Hello? Yes, I give you Jesus to protect them when you are at work and you left them with somebody else to care for them. I give you Jesus. Most daycare institutions these days have you know, um, surveillance so that you can be at work and see what's happening. But even then, you need protection from dangers that are unseen. For there is still a great controversy, a war over the soul of humanity. And the birth of every child is a miracle. I was telling the mothers this week that I've had to uh, minister to mothers who have had stillbirths and I've had to share with loved ones who are torn between joy and devastation when the baby is born but the mother did not make it. God is good to you. God is good to you. For nine months, you knew nothing that was happening inside of you. But God. And he molded them into beautiful children. Children that you are proud to say, and I'm her mother. <laughs> 
God is good. And I want to applaud you because there is no hand, there is no system of protection in which you can rest assured that your children are okay except they are in the hands of God. Amen. Except they are in the hands of God. So I'm going to uh, get down to prayer now, but I'm glad that you brought them here. And the fact that you've brought them here means that they have become a part of our responsibility. Yes. So every now and again, you don't be annoyed when you get a call from the church to check in on you and your children. Is that all right? Yes, yes that's good. And I also am happy that you took them here this young because since they are now a part of the church family at this stage, it means you cannot send them to church. You have to take them to church, which means that you're going to be here too as often as you can be as they, are, uh, as they develop in the fear and admonition of the Lord. So I'm going to ask one of my female elders to give a word um, to the mothers, and I'm going to ask one of my male elders to give a word to the fathers or the um, male figures in the lives and the female figures in the lives. As the spirit moves you, just move toward me and I will hand you the microphone, <laughs> elder, and you will share with them. Um, very, very short word to the mother or father. And so as I address the fathers of the importance of being there for your child, your children, God was intentional when he allowed our first parent, Adam and Eve, to show the example for which he, God, approve of. Uh, and so it cannot be mother and no father. It cannot be father and no mother. It means that the two together brings a family that God uh, approve of. And so as our pastor had mentioned, uh, a, a child coming into this world is a miracle that God would have established between you both. And so God is looking forward for you to nurture and to care as he continue to bless your life. May you continue to strive with God as he continue to do his will. God bless you all. Amen. Thank you so much, Emma. Parents, it's indeed a honor God has bestowed on you to have beautiful children. Amen. And the same God who blessed your womb and blessed you with these beautiful children will continue to bless you. Amen. Psalms 119 verse 49 um, says that they that contend with you, the Lord will contend with them and he will save your children. Amen. Contend with the Lord. Stand on his word. Do your part and he will do the rest for you and your children. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much, Elder. So now I'm going to ask two elders to also help me hold these little ones as we pray this prayer of uh, blessing and dedication. Like the stars of
Will the church join us in standing as we pray? Our Heavenly Father, what an honor we have to be reminded of your sovereignty through the miracle of birth. And even those of us as adults are reminded, Heavenly Father, that none of us is here by chance and that there is no life that's purposeless because the very start of every human life is a miracle hallelujah thank you god for these little ones who you have gifted to their parents we've come to live in a time father when not even our children are safe there was a time when murderers had compassionate hearts toward children but these days, even little ones are killed, mighty God. And so I place these three in your hands, O oh Heavenly Father. And I ask God that you'll beat back every force of darkness. I ask that you'll move ahead into time and that you'll carve out safety in their futures. I pray, Father, I come against, under the authority of the Holy Spirit, Everything the devil will build up for their destruction, may you tear it down, mighty God. And everything the devil will plant for their discomfort, may you uproot it in the name of Jesus. And I pray for blood coverage and protection. I pray you'll protect them from evil men and women and from the destructive plans of the devil. I pray you'll protect them, God, from dangers seen and unseen. I pray that you'll protect them from pathogens and bacteria that will disrupt their anatomy and physiology and i pray god almighty that these children will be walking testimonies of your goodness i pray god that you'll touch their brain cells that when they get to the point of human development where they'll need to be enrolled in uh, intellectual or academic settings i pray that they'll be outstanding god that they'll be the head and not the tail, above and not beneath, a front and not behind. I pray you'll bless them, God. I pray you'll provide for their parents, supplying all their needs according to your riches in glory. May these children, none of them ever have to go to bed a single night on an empty stomach unless they are fasting. I pray that you'll open the storehouses of heaven and pour out blessings upon their parents that they'll not have room enough to receive them. May you supply every need of these children, God. We hold you accountable, Jesus, for you have gifted these little ones to us. And we thank you in advance. Bless their parents in seasons when they are overwhelmed by the demands of parenting. May you surround them with supportive family members and friends and even a supportive church family. May we be there for them, reaching out to them, encouraging them, pushing them, oh God, forward. And I pray, God, that when we can't reach them physically, may we envelope them in our prayers that the hands that we cannot see will be there for them when our hands can't be there to embrace them. Thank you, Jesus, for the promises of your word. Thank you for the assurance that anyone we commit to you, you will keep unto that day. In Jesus' name, amen, amen and amen. Like the stars of the
for him for uh, three or four feet or four feet stand. Kneel with me. Father in heaven, I just want to say a very special thank you for being who you are, for waking us up every morning and bringing us through another week. We are blessed to be able to meet yet again with our brothers and sisters at Calvary to celebrate another beautiful Sabbath day. As we kneel in your presence, I especially want to pray for all the children of the Calvary SDA Church, church Children's Ministry, AY, Pathfinders, Adventurers, as well as all the families, moms and dads. As you know, the, as you know that the children and families need you now more than ever. With everything going on in the world, in school and even at home, we truly need your presence, your strength and your mercy. I want to say a very special prayer for each individual that's here today. You know their needs, their wants, and their desires. I also pray for our sick and shut in, our visitors, and let's not forget who are worshiping online. Allow us to all feel your presence in our lives. And on our behalf, and remind us that you 
can claim the victory. Pour a special blessing on all of us this Children's Day. Anoint our speakers for today and use them to tell your word that you have for us today. Soften our hearts so that we can hear it, accept it, and apply it to our lives. Be with us in a special way for the rest of the Sabbath day. Let our worship and praise be acceptable unto you. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Happy Sabbath, everyone. <laughs> Honor the Lord with your wealth and with the first fruits of all your produce. Then your barns will be filled with plenty and your presses shall burst out with new wine. God has blessed every single day of our lives, so let us be faithful to him. You may also return your tithes and offering through one of these three, main, three means. Online giving through our website at calvarysda.com. You may mail at P.O. Box 186, 1861 Bridgeport CT or download the Adventist Giving app. You may proceed to collect this morning's tithe and offering.
Bring the full tithes into the storehouse, that there may be food into my house, and thereby put me to the test, says the Lord of hosts, if I will not open the windows of heaven and pour down for you an overflowing of blessings. Let us pray. Dearly Father, we thank you for your, the blessings that you give us, and we ask that you help us be better stewards and allow us to use our blessings to help others. Amen. Amen. Please stand, everyone, for the scripture reading. The scripture reading is taken from Hebrews 11, verse 1 to 4. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for the evidence of things not seen. For by it the elders obtained a good report. Through faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God, that the things which are seen were not made of things which do appear. By faith Abel offered unto God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain, which he obtained witness that he was righteous. God testified of his gifts, and by it he being dead yet speaketh. Amen. Amen. You may be seated.
Samuel's from the lovely island of St. Vincent. He attends He attends Richland Parks, Richland Parks SDA School in St. Vincent for five years. He accepted Jesus as his personal savior at the tender age of seven. Samuel currently attends SIS School in Shelton and is in the seventh grade. He is a member of Calvary, Calvary General Pathfinder Club. He loves, and he loves animals. Will the family of Samuel please stand? Thank you, you may be seated. Jasmine North Lindsay is 11 years old. She attends St. Mary's St. Michael's School and is in the sixth grade. She loves to travel and spend time with friends. She also loves caring for her 14 chickens. Most of all, she loves Jesus. Will the family of Jasmine please stand? Thank you, you may be seated. Lathan Lillian. Lathan is 13 years old and the second of three children born in the E family and Antoinette Lillian. He is also a son of all his extended family and church family. Lathan attends Fairfield County Seventh-day Adventist School and is, also, and is also in the eighth grade. He is humble He's a humble child and always willing to do what's asked of him. He did not hesitate to serve as a young deacon when asked. Lathan is a part of the, Lathan is a part of the Calvary General's Drum Corps, and his current goal is to learn how to play the quad so his big sister can know he's a man. <laughs> he enjoys playing the guitar and cannot wait to be back on the soccer field with mature men of his church. His favorite text is Philippians 4 verse 3, 4 verse 13, sorry. I will do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Will the family of Lathan please stand? After the song of meditation, you will hear. After the song of meditation, the next voices you will hear are that of Lathan, Jasmine, and Samuel. I think I made a mess of the program. I'm sorry. Um, the praise team, please come. I, I sung special music. It was supposed to be praise and worship. Praise is to our King, for He is the King of Kings. 
singing is I am a friend of God. Yeah, I know. 
last song is More Than Anything. Mike, the time is far spent. We're, we're going to be doing the meditation. The choir is going to be doing the meditation. 
please stand choir. Media, I know you may be looking and say, they're not children. They're too big, right? You think they're too big? No. But when, we have, when it's a children choir, you're probably thinking some little baby ones, right? Where's media? Where's that picture? Oh, it's over there? I just want to show the goodness of God and his blessing upon our children. We've been together for some years now. And these children, they have grown. Can you see? They have grown. So right now we probably need some smaller ones. So when they shall transition, I think we should change the name from Children's Choir. Because when it's a children, they may not want to come back. <laughs> But I just want to show how good God has been to this, our church, with our children for all these years. For those who don't know, we didn't start practicing last night. We've been together for a little bit. Okay? And also, it's through the choir that we develop our praise team. The praise team that sung just now. Were you blessed? Yes. Were you blessed? Yes. Let me tell you, that was their first time up here. Today was their first time. So they came from the choir. And we also have the other, now, I would say what, youth praise team? Youth praise team? They were from the choir too. So this is where they develop. So if you have your children, they can sing, bring them. So we can nurture them and grow so they can develop their talents and sing for the Lord. He gives us these gifts and talents and we have to use them to honor and glorify his name. So listen to us now, we won't be long. I feel bad, but... Let's worship the Lord together in the beauty of holiness. Amen? Amen. Don't rush me. From whence cometh my help, my help cometh from the Lord, the Lord which made heaven and earth. He said, he will not suffer thy foot, thy foot to be moved, the Lord which keepeth thee. slumber nor sleep for the Lord is thy keeper the Lord is thy shepherd upon the right hand upon the right hand nor the sun shall not smite thee by day 
morning, Calvary. Good morning. God is good. And all the time. First, I'm honored to be here this morning. A great big thanks to you. To God the Father, to God the Son, and the Holy Spirit from which all my help comes from. Secondly, I would like to thank our pastor, Pastor Hamilton, for sharing his pulpit with us this morning. Also, thanks to our head elders and board of elders who have made this day possible. And to you, Calvary, the, light of, the lighthouse of love, happy Sabbath. Happy Sabbath. Please stand as I read this text found in 1 Corinthians 10, verse 13. There hath no temptation taken you, but such as is common to man. But God is faithful who will not suffer you to be tempted above that ye are able, but, but, but will with temptation also make a way to escape, that ye may be able to bear it. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for staying long enough to be here. I ask that you help me and my compadres to deliver the word with you and us. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. amen. You may be seated. This afternoon, I would like to share a little with you about a hero of faith. As we were reminded in Hebrews 11, verse 1, faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. From the NIV version, now faith is being sure of what we hope for and certain of what we do not see. From this definition, from this definition we can see that faith is not positive thinking. Put down your Tony Robinson books and your Joel, Joel Osteen views, or faith is not self-confidence. Today, the individual we will speak about surely takes a cake when we talk about faith. In the face of impossibilities, this individual was willing to obey God. And looking at the text we read, we read earlier, the words of the text are so powerful when we think that God is infinite wisdom will never put more on us than we are able to bear. These words are so rich for us Christians today as we continue to see every day in the Bible. These words were true then and are true today. So when we have an illness and we cry, oh my, why would God let me suffer like this? This text reminds us that God is fair. In, God is fair. in life there will be trials. And we will need to believe that God will allow trials. And if God permits it, God already supplies us with the strength to endure it. Amen. Our hero today is Noah. The world was very close to how God created earth in Genesis chapter 1. So what Noah and the people of his time were able to witness was the true beauty of the earth. We see in Genesis 6 verse 5. And God saw the wickedness of man was great in the earth, and that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was continually evil. Just imagine, we live today 70, 80, maybe 90 years, and some of us have so much sin, only a loving God can forgive us. But think about people in Noah's time. They lived 600, 700, even 800 years. Just imagine the amount of sin you could create in that amount of time. You know the saying goes, there's nothing new on the earth. And after reading this text, the world in Noah's time was a bad, bad place. These were bad people. If you could do anything for 200 to 300 years, you could be really good at it. But these people committed sin for 200 to 300 years. These were terrible people. They were basically professional sinners. And in Genesis 6, verse 11, it reads, the earth was also corrupt before God and the earth was filled with violence. These were the times that Noah was asked by God to deliver a message to try to save a sinful earth. So Noah was given some instructions by God that he was tasked to follow in the most wicked times on earth. In Genesis 6, starting at verse 13, we see God's assignment to Noah. Number one, I'm going to destroy the earth. Number two, build a boat, not an ordinary boat but in an ark-like boat. Number three, 
build an arc light bulb in a certain way. This reminds us, if we want to be saved, we have to do it God's way, not our way. <laughs> Number four, I'm going to send the flood. Number five, the ark is for you, your wives, your sons, and daughters-in-law. Number six, save in the ark various creatures. And number seven, bring food on the ark for yourselves and the beasts. In verse 22, we read, Thus Noah did according to all God commanded him, so he did. When God gives us instructions, we are to follow God's instruction completely, regardless of what we may think. Noah was expected to do exactly what he was told, even though it seemed to be more than Noah's ability. Today, God asks, asks us to live a righteous life, but the Bible says all have sinned. It would appear that God is asking us to do something beyond our ability. The Bible tells us to be holy, even like the Lord God is holy. Then the Bible says, there is none good, not, no, not one. It appears like God is asking us to do something again, beyond our ability. Being, being a follower of Christ has always been beyond our ability. The only thing that makes this possible, like it did for Noah, is the power of God. Amen. Noah could not build the ark by himself. No one needed God to build the ark. But let's look at the issues Noah's faced. Number one, Noah was told all flesh would be destroyed. This would make one think. Noah's first question to God could have been, if you're going to wipe out all things, why do I have to preach? Today, we are asked to take the gospel to the people, but, not, but by now, we know that everyone we come in contact with or each other that we knock on will not accept or open. But God wants us to take the message to the people anyways. We take the message and let God make our decision on who will be the saved. The job as Calvarians is to take the message to the community. We are not to decide who is going to listen or who will be saved. Just spread the message. Sometimes God's people, as God's people, we try to make the decision on who will be saved. Oh, that one can't be saved because he or she drinks. That one can't be saved because she wears jewelry. That one can't be saved because he or she smokes. That one can't save, be saved because he or she has tattoos. God reminded Noah to not worry about who will be saved, but to build the ark. Today, is God, God is reminding us not to worry about who would to be saved. Just build the ark. Our job is to build the ark. God's job is to save who he can. Amen. Number two, Noah was told the ark. Noah was told to build the ark. The ark was to be huge and was to be built on dry land. So here we see why Noah was a hero of faith. Because Noah has, has never seen or heard of an ark. He was told to build a huge houseboat on dry land. Just imagine the teasing and Noah's family received daily for building a houseboat on dry land for some catastrophic event that never, ever happened since Adam was created. Yes, there was water in Noah's days, but the earth was watered by a mist. Genesis 2 verse 5 reminds us, Every plant of the field before it was in the earth and every herb of the field before it grew, for the Lord had not caused it to rain upon the earth. Today, when God asks us to do something, we have the history and the experience of others we can look to. But for Noah, God is asking Noah to do something he cannot even understand. So here, this, here there is this man, respected in the community, starts to build a large boathouse, just imagine the questions and the ridicule that Noah had to face to do something you don't really understand and then explain it to the critics. Certainly qualified Noah as a hero of faith. Amen. Number three. So we know what God had asked Noah to do, but do we believe it or not? Do we believe it or not that was not the diff most difficult part of Noah's assignment. To really see the faith of Noah, let's do a little math. In Genesis 7 verse 6, it reads, and Noah was 600 years old when the flood, when the flood of the waters was upon the earth. In Genesis 6 verse 3, the Bible says, and the Lord said, 
my spirit shall not always strive with man, for that he is also flesh, yet his days, yet his days shall be a hundred and twenty years. So we take the six hundred years minus a hundred twenty years when God called Noah. The math indicates Noah was 480 years old when he started preaching. Or we could say he started the, sep the first Seventh-day Adventist church. <laughs> Some more math. In Genesis 5, verse 32, we are told, And Noah was 500 years old when Noah begot Shem, Ham, and Japheth. In Genesis, in Genesis 11, verse 10, we read, Shem was 100 years old two years after the flood. So hear this, Noah and Mrs. Noah had to believe they would have children not born yet. His children would marry women not even thought of and be saved from a flood that has never, ever happened. Now that's faith. Noah preached 20 years before his children were born. Remember, God told Noah the ark was to be built for his children. In his first 20 years of preaching, Noah may have preached, that God is going to save me and my children. People may have looked at Noah like, what kids are you talking about? <laughs> Noah had to operate for 20 years just on following God's word, not knowing which year the children would be born. In the Bible, the math is truly mathing. Number four, God told Noah he was to gather up all the animals. The gathering of the animals marching towards the ark must have been one of the most amazing happenings on earth up to that time. Just imagine an orderly gathering of the animals to go to the ark. Who was in charge? Who was in charge? Certainly not Noah, but God. If those who didn't believe for 120 years didn't change their minds with the animals marching into the ark, then what else could God have done? Five, number five, then God told Noah to gather enough food to feed themselves and all the beasts they were to gather. Now, I could go on about what happened when, or when the animals and the beasts were in the ark, but as I conclude, we want to, remind, we want, we want to be reminded about the faith of Noah. First, Noah obeyed God exactly. Second, Noah obeyed God carefully. And third, Noah obeyed God at all costs. As a result, Noah's faith is a great model for our lives and for our faith. Calvary, it is our goal to be great believers rather than great thinkers. We are to be childlike, you know, like me, rather than content in our experience and satisfied with and what we think. In other words, we are to live by faith. Like Noah, we, are, we want to be heroes like faith. In God's power, let us run this race. Good morning, Calvary. Before I, before I read my sermonette today, I would like to thank my grandparents and all my family for coming out to support me today. I would like to thank our pastor and our board of elders for this opportunity. As we continue our sermonette today on Heroes of Faith, my topic is no, you take the lead. Our story begins in the wonderful book of Judges and tells of a time with the children of Israel. This time period is part of the 300 years before God allowed the children of Israel to have a king. But before that time, God had given Israel judges to rule over the children of Israel. In the previous chapter, Judges chapter 3, the children of Israel had just went through a period of time with a judge by the name of Ehud, whose unique feature was that he was a left-handed judge and they had prospered under his reign. However, as we see in the book of Judges, which repeats itself over 300 years, the children of Israel would sin. God would allow them to be held captive or enslaved for a period of time. After a while, they would cry out to the Lord, and when their cries would become loud enough, the Lord would raise up a judge 
to deliver his people, and with God's wonderful mercy, God would provide someone to lead them until it happens again. We look at the book of Judges, and we can bring this story home to us modern-day Christians. God blesses us for a period of time, then we, come, then we become complacent sometimes, forgetting about God and all he has done for us. Then when we have a misfortune, we cry to God, Oh, why is God allowing this to happen to me? Why is it always me? Why does Sally or John down the street always getting what they want in life? When I, what have I done to deserve this misfortune? Sounds familiar? This is what happens all throughout the book of Judges, which leads us to our story. God wanted Israel to always be special among the nations, but Israel did not want to, did not want to be the leader, but was interested in following the other nations. In our story today, it was because of sin Israel had committed earlier in Joshua 11, where God had instructed Joshua to destroy all the cities. However, they did not destroy the city of King Jabin, the king of the Canaanites, completely. As with our sins, if we do not follow what the Lord has instructed, there will be times when our past sins will come back even larger to attack us, to attack, uh, as, to attack us at another time. Calvary, let's follow the Lord's words and instructions in its entirety so that our sins will stay buried where God has placed them. So here comes Deborah, who's an amazing woman like many of our ladies today here at Calvary. Can I get an amen? amen. But let us step back a little. In this story, we have six main characters. There is Deborah, the prophetess and judge, Lebedus, her husband, Barak, the Israeli general, Jabin, the king of the Canaanite city, Caesarea, the Canaanite general, and Jael. Deborah was, un was unique, but first, first she was a female judge of Israel, the only one mentioned in the Bible. Secondly, Deborah was a prophetess, one of the few female prophetess mentioned in the Bible. And as a prophetess and the judge during her time, she was considered the full leader of Israel. Third, Deborah was the wife of Labidoth and a mother. Another fact of the Bible in this chapter is the only place in the Bible where the wife of any man is mentioned first. Ladies, God does have a place for us. Yeah. Deborah also has her own tree named after her, the tree of Deborah. Now you may say, so, so what is that important? Well, nowhere else in the 66 books of the Bible does a female have a tree named after her. It is from, this, from under this tree where Deborah delivered most of her counseling and direction to the children of Israel. Just imagine, instead of a courthouse, you were to be judged for, from under the tree of Deborah. We are reminded in Judges chapter 5, and the children of Israel came up to her for judgment. As Deborah judged Israel, Jabin the king and Caesarea, and Sisera had harshly oppressed Israel for 20 years. After Joshua did not wipe out his city, Jabin was smart and he set out on a plan to make his city, plan to make his city and his army stronger. First, he fortified his city, then he amassed an army with 900 chariots. So to see an army with up to 900 chariots rumbling towards you, it presented a frightening sight. Jabin did all of this as he knew he would get, uh, get another opportunity at Israel. Calvary, when we play on the devil's turf and not follow God's instructions, we will get burned. <laughs> as Jabin was planning his next attack, Deborah called up Barak, the general of the army, and said unto him, Has not the Lord God of Israel commanded, Go and deploy troops to Mount Tabar and take with you 10,000 men? and I will deploy Sisera, the, com the commander of Jabin's army, with his chariots and multitude at the river Kishon and deliver him into your hand. Deborah approached General Barak with this as a, as a question. As we see, the Lord was trying to get the message to the army of Israel, but no one was heeding the call. Calvary, sometimes our battles appear so large, but God is telling us to push forward but yet we forget how almighty God is as we look at the size or the strength of what is before us. Forgetting, as the song says, the battle is not ours, it is the Lord's. Yes. So Barak has received this 
message, but refused to follow through as he was feared, fearful of the Canaanite army and the 900 chariots. Look how great God is. Not only had God given the orders to go into battle, but he also told the, told the how many troops to take, 10,000, where to go, the river Kish, Kishon, and had promised Israel the victory. Oh, what a God we serve. Don't you know he woke us up this morning, hearing us on our way, eyes to see, ears to hear, a mouth to talk, and even legs to walk, brought us here from a mighty long way, so good. Men, you do not want to be like Barak. In Judges 4, verse 8, we see Barak responding to Deborah. If you go with me, then I will go. But if you will not go with me, I will not go. Sounds like a scared cat to me rather than a leader. Even though God has promised he would deliver the enemy, he did not have any faith. But let's not look down on Barak because myself and maybe some of you would have reacted the same way. We pray to God for deliverance or maybe make a request, then God gives us the answer. But we think about others and we become fearful, not having faith, or standing on the promises of God, which cannot fail. We are thankful of our hero of faith in this story. In the next verse, Deborah gives Barak the courage to say and says, I will go with you, but listen to the end of, this, of the verse. Never list, nevertheless, there will be no glory for you in the journey you are taking. The Lord will sell Caesarea into the hand of a woman. There is a confident woman and a woman of faith. For here, Deborah was prophesying the final defeat of Sisera will be at the hand of a woman, Jael, who we will see later in this story. So as the story goes, where God has asked the army of Israel to go was about 2,000 feet above sea level. So what Sisera and his army tried, so when Sisera and his army tried to attack Israel with their great army and Andrew's chariot, the chariots got stuck in the mud trying to navigate towards Mount Tabor along the banks of the river Kishon. Listen to how Deborah leads. May we... Maybe we should call her General Deborah, her instructions to Barak and the army. Up, for this is the day in which the Lord has delivered Sisera into your hand. Has not the Lord gone out, gone out before you? So Sisera's army was easy pickings after that. And the army of Israel routed the Canaanite army that day. This story does not end here, for you see. Sisera, General Sisera, got... General Caesarea got stuck in the mud also, but as his chariot was falling over, he escaped. But Barak and the army of Israel chased him out and the rest of his army into a place of Harashit. So why is this important? Caesarea thought he had escaped and went towards the tent of Jael, where, who was the wife of Her Heber, who had been kind to Sisera on a previous occasion. But Sisera did not know that Jael was a sympathizer of the people of God. So Jael helped Sisera into the tent and covered him with a blanket. Sisera then asked Jael for some water to quench his thirst. He was thirsty after all that running. However, Jael gave him milk. So why do we think Jael gave Sisera the milk instead of water? As we all know, water will make you will wake you up, maybe give you more energy, but milk will sit on your stomach, thus making you sleepy. After Sisera fell asleep, Jael took a peg of a tent and a hammer and drove the peg into Sisera's forehead, and he died. After this, King Jael had lost, and the children of Israel grew stronger and were no longer oppressed. Glory to God! As I conclude, although Deborah is only mentioned in Judges chapter 4 and 5, we can see how God can use anyone to carry out his will. In this story, God uses two women to win the battle of Israel. As we sit here today, how will God use you to win his battle for the lost souls in this community? Today, let us take a stand like Deborah, our hero of faith, 
and stand firm to see how God will deliver can candidates for heaven into our midst. So long as we have faith and leave the finishing touches to the Holy Spirit, March is known as Women's History Month, and we see in today's story how powerful women, women who have their faith in God, can carry God's will where others may step back. God will raise up women to take to lead the charge. Today, let us rise like with Deborah and lead the charge as we prepare to go to our eternal home. Thank you, and may God continue to bless Calvary. Good afternoon, Lighthouse of Love. As I stand here before you this afternoon, I count it an awesome privilege to come before the people of God. I am assured that my Calvary family will stand by my side. Let us stand as we read together this text from the book of Hebrews 11 and verse 1. Please say amen when it is found. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, let me decrease and you increase. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. You may be seated. As we continue... With our series on the heroes of faith, the thought came to me that it would be important that we be reminded about faith as it is defined by the Bible. Our last hero is quite a unique hero, but the relevance of this individual to the Bible and our salvation is even more unique, is even more amazing. You see, our God can use anyone to accomplish what he has set out to get accomplished. For the Bible is loaded with many individuals who we have read about and sang about. And even though they came short of what we may consider ideal, God used them in some marvelous ways. Amen, brethren? Amen. Our story begins in Joshua 2 and verse 1, where the word of the Lord says, And Joshua, the son of Nun, sent out of Shittim two men to spy secretly, saying, Go view the land, even Jericho. And they went and came into a harlot's house named Rahab and lodged there. From this verse, we can either praise God or be concerned. For this verse tells us that God knows our address. Yes, he can find you and me. Out of all the people in Jericho, look at whose house God led the spies to. Our God is all-knowing and everywhere. And he knows where this harlot lives. God knows where the people we may pass by live. God knows where the visitors who may come to our doorstep here that we will not associate with. God knows where they live. And sometimes, when we come across a person with a not-so-good background, our minds need to think, this can be a candidate yes. for heaven. Yes. Instead of moving away or sitting on the opposite side. Yes. Thank you for the amen, as Brother Gray would say. <laughs> Verse 2 reads, And it was told the king of Jericho, saying, Behold, there came men in heather tonight of the children of Israel to search out the country. Verse 3, listen to this. And, all, and the king of Jericho sent unto Rahab, saying, Bring forth the men that are come to thee, 
which are entered into thine house, for they become to search out all the country. This verse lets us know that even the king of Jericho knew who was Rahab and where she lived. Rahab seems to be well known. Verse 5, And it came to pass about the time of shutting of the gate, when it was dark, that the men went out. Whether the men went out, I wot not. Pursue after them quickly, for he shall overtake them. Verse 6, But she had brought them up to the roof of the house, and hid them with the stack of flax, which she had laid on upon the roof. A quick look at these two verses tells us some things. First, Rahab lied to the king, and second, she was a good liar. <laughs> In my mind, this brings up a question. Is there a good time to lie? Now don't take this verse and use it to your advantage because we know there are some people out there who think it is always okay to lie. But when you think about the story of Israel, Rahab plays an important part in the Bible story. God can use any of us to carry out his will. Marshall Montano, at nine years old, he sang too young to soca. We are not too young to be used by God. We need to think about that because we look at each other and if we do not think that we are keeping each of the Ten Commandments, that we are condemned. But thank you, God. In God's eyes, even a sinner like me or you can be used to the glory of God. But back to Rahab, not only was Rahab a good business person. We will stop right there. Don't be upset with the speaker. For you see, Rahab had a house on the wall near the gate. So Rahab can be looked at as being smart. But in real estate, it is all about location. Location, location. Her house was by the gate at the wall. This was a premium spot in the city of Jericho. But let's look at how Rahab negotiates with the spies. For she laid out their own history before them, a history that happened some 40 years prior. Also, how they had defeated mighty armies and how it laid fair into the hearts of other nations. Then she witnessed saying, for the, Lord, the, for the Lord your God, he is God in heaven above and in the earth beneath. Amen. I can almost imagine the shock on the faces of the two spies. Here they were being witnessed to by a harlot whose country they would soon invade to destroy that nation. The negotiation continues, verse 12. Now therefore, I pray you, swear unto me by the Lord, since I have showed you kindness, that ye will also show kindness unto my father's house, and give me a true token. Amen. Verse 14, and that ye will save alive my father and my mother and my brethren and my sisters, and all them that they have and deliver our lives from death. What a businesswoman. This woman was good. If you are in a difficult situation, Rahab sounds like someone you would want to carry out your negotiations. Yes, just think about all that what was happening. Rahab lied to the king of Jericho, so this was like treason. And so if she was found out, she would have been swiftly put to death. But here was Rahab, having faith in the God of Israel and negotiating her escape plan with those who were coming to wipe out her city, 
a city which was her own. Oh, what a hero, for we see in Rahab. With the little she knew, Rahab had made up her mind that she wanted to be aligned with the people of God. For Rahab, who was a Gentile in a pagan country, had made a different decision from everyone else in Jericho. In Jericho, everyone else wanted to get rid of the spies and kill them. But Rahab chose to hide them for safety. For us, Calvary, Rahab made a decision based against the culture of her time. Calvary, would we do the same? Or would we go along with the culture because everyone else was doing it? This is decisions all of us can be faced with. Now I will ask you three questions. Do we choose the Lord or the crowd? Do we choose the Lord or popularity? Do we choose the Lord or being famous and rich in this world? As a Christian, one of the realities is we find ourselves by ourselves. You see, God can use any of us to carry out his will. Just look at what Rahab was entrusted to carry out for the people of God. A true hero of faith. But more than that, if we were all like Rahab, and you may ask why, Rahab saw her chance for a better life. She sees her chance for improvement. She sees her chance for salvation, and Rahab takes it. Another way to look at Rahab is Rahab made a decision based on her faith in the God of Israel, then negotiated to save herself and her family. Does that sound like any of us in here? Some of us would say, God, if you do this for me, I will follow you all the way, or I will be a better person, or I will pay my tithes and offerings. We make a deal with God, and then if God comes true for us, we try to follow what we negotiated. That is not faith. For we see Rahab had faith. Let us remember, for without faith, it is impossible to please God. God wants to see our faith before he blesses us fully. Remember our text in Hebrews 11 and verse 1? Faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. God wants us to trust him first before he responds with the blessing. Think about the history of this woman. Maybe looked down by some, but she is wise. Rahab had faith and jumped at her opportunity for salvation. Yes, we truly need to take a look at Rahab. At first glance, we would look the other way if we ran into someone like Rahab. But God, but God, when God looks at our lives, sometimes our lives can be looked at just like Rahab's, to be looked down upon by society, sometimes even by our own church. Well, that doesn't happen here at Calvary. But truthfully for us, God's love can be our only worthiness. When you think of the grip sin has had on this earth and how God has pulled us out of the merry clay, today we can say, I have an opportunity to see God's kingdom because God kept me and he wouldn't let go. God sees beyond my fault and have kept working to save me. Oh, what a God. Can I hear a bigger amen, brethren? If we were to think about heaven, when we get there, we will be spending our time just singing and praising God, just to give thanks from all that he has saved us from. Rahab was a woman of faith who did not live by sight, but by faith. Can we say today we are living by faith? 
Or do we need to see the blessing first before we commit? We have committed, then was blessed, a hero of the faith. We continue. We have used the scarlet thread to get the spies to freedom, and the same scarlet color would be later used to give Rahab her freedom from sin and her salvation. The Bible is truly a unique book. It teaches us some things. Look how Rahab, a hero of the faith, is referred to. Joshua 6 and verse 22. But Joshua had said unto the two men that had spied out the country, Go into the harlot's house and bring out thence the woman and all that she have, as ye swore unto her, still a harlot, in Hebrews, where we read about the Hall of Fame for biblical heroes. Hebrews 11, 31, and it reads, By faith the harlot Rahab perished not with them that believe not, when she had received the spies with peace. But we also see how Rahab was able to save all of her family, whom she had negotiated for. Wouldn't it be great if, like Rahab, me or you can negotiate to save our entire family? God is good, should we say? What an evangelist. But Rahab is still referred to as the harlot. But in the Heroes Hall of Fame, she has her own voice. The Bible teaches us that it doesn't matter what people say about me or you. All we need to do is to just get into heaven. Another unique thing about the Bible is the best of us or the worst. And why would I say that? Well, look at Hebrews 11. Noah, who we have heard about earlier, he got drunk. Abraham would lie in a minute if he was under pressure. So would, his, so would Isaac, his son, and his grandson, Jacob. Moses had a temper problem. Gideon was distraught with fear. When we have told the stories of these heroes, these were all the good guys. Then there was King David, greatest king in Israel's history. We know what he did with Uriah's wife. Solomon, his son, known as the wisest man, it is said he had over 1,000 wives. Enough said. <laughs> Peter used coarse words. John the disciple was an angry man. So don't be too quick to write off anyone. There is so much to Rahab as we see in Matthew 1 and verse 5. Is in the direct lineage of Jesus. For Rahab, when she was taken into Israel, would later meet Solomon. And Solomon who was the father of Boaz, who later married Ruth. So we see where Rahab came from. As being a harlot to being the great-great-grandmother of David, wow. whose lineage gave us the child born in Bethlehem. Amen. What a God we serve. Amen. How he can use Amen. who we may think of as the least in society to produce God's most magnificent gift, yeah. the gift of his son, Amen. who came from the lineage of Rahab to be my savior and your savior. Amen. It's not how you start, but how you finish. Yeah. As I land the plane today, we see three heroes who were mentioned in the Heroes Hall of Fame. The one we may look down on teaches us something. Yeah. Our past does not have to be our future. Right. 
these champions of yesterday testify to us today. With God on our side, all things are possible. Amen. To my fellow young people, where we were yesterday does not have to be where we will be tomorrow with God in our corner. God will keep us. If we can remember like Noah to stand firm and not follow the crowd, God will keep us. Or like the Boa, to be ready to lead with God's directions, and God will keep us. Or we have to stand on the side of God and not be like everyone else around us. God will keep us. God will open to us the windows of heaven and pour out a blessing that there shall not be room enough to receive it. Amen. Rahab is mentioned one more time in the Bible, for we see in James 2 and verse 25, James lets us know that Rahab, the woman of faith, because of her faith, acted on that faith, and that made the difference, because faith without action is dead. Calvary, please stand with me if we want to be like our heroes of faith and say, God, we lay it all in your hands. Thank you for having your way, Lord, and for keeping us. I will now ask Elder Russell if he can come forward and pray for the congregation. Amen, church. Amen. Shall we pray? Eternal Father, you have created this world. You have formed and fashioned us human beings. You gave us life. You gave us the direction in which we are to go. Tell us how to live so that we can please you. Right. Nevertheless, Man went astray, and in spite of going astray, you put a blockage at the end of the detour and created another detour that will turn us back to you. You gave Jesus the only begotten son. He came and he lived <coughs> the life that we ought to live. He set that example for us to follow. You give us children. And we believe, as much as we read and heard, that they are a heritage from the Lord. And we are thankful for them. They came today and they delivered. They deliver your word, O Lord. And we ask that you will help us to take seriously to understand that faith without works is dead that we'll understand that without faith, it is impossible to please God. And to understand within ourselves that faith, as much as it is, as it appears to be intangible, it is very much tangible. So help us, Lord, that we'll take hold of faith. And the word, the question that Jesus asked, when the Son of Man comes, will he find faith? May that not be us. May we continue to live by faith, walk by faith. And, O oh Lord, when you shall come, save us in your eternal kingdom. So we are rededicating ourselves to you even now, of that by faith we will walk. By faith we will believe. And by faith we will work. So help us as we wait, as we pray. We will continue to work, we, play, we pray in Jesus' name. Closing song is 608, Faith is the Victory.
closing prayer. God, thank you for this day. Please protect our pastor and his wife. Please protect the homeless. Please protect all the people that have come to church today. Please, please protect all the people that need need protection. And in Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. Amen and amen. amen. Pastor, <laughs> what day is it today? Today has been Children's Day from morning even until now. And our hearts have been blessed. I truly have been blessed. You're lucky you were on the pulpit today, Pastor, because I don't know if you could have talked that. <laughs> I'm not quite sure. No, no, they did well. In fact, in fact, as I saw them preaching, there, there are moments when I had tears in my eyes because I remember the first time, many people look at me today and think I can't preach, but I remember the first time I was supposed to preach mm -hmm. Children's Sabbath. Mm -hmm. And I went to the, the pulpit and I stood there <laughs> for 30 minutes, not a word. <laughs> not a word. The church was so wow. gracious, they sat there just praying that I would start. <laughs> not a word until ultimately they had to take me down Mercy. and allow somebody else to preach. Mm. And I cried the whole day, not even lunch. Oh. But the next time, when they asked me to preach for children's Sabbath, I came back with vengeance. Amen. <laughs> and so I'm so proud of our young people, so proud of our children, as they are giving up their best to the master, and they have done. My heart has been blessed today. And it is our prayers that all of your hearts have been blessed, including those who have been worshiping with us online today. Some of you were very busy in the chat. We're delighted that you would have chosen to worship with us here today. What was your most, what's your most memorable moment of the service today? Honestly, I think my favorite part was Samuel. He went up there and he just, he just rushed the crowd. Everyone was so encaptured by what he had to <laughs> say. Pastor, I'm... I'm happy that they even let you go up there and preach again <laughs> after you stood up there for 30 minutes because now we have a pastor, a pastor who is showing us young people how the guidance that we have to preach now, letting God fill our hearts and let us preach, preach his word. Yeah. Because I could feel God in Samuel today as he preached, in Jasmine and in Lathan. Amen. Amen. And not just the sermons, but... I could feel God in the choir and the praise team. It has just been an awesome Sabbath celebration. I was asking Sister Gray if the children's Sabbath is just once per year. <laughs> because this kind of experience shouldn't just be once for the year. You know, as we see our children leading from the front. And as parents, you are positioned to see that your prayers and your investment is not going in vain. They may not always do what you want them to do, how you want them to do it, but they most certainly are hearing what you're saying. They are learning from you what to do and what not to do, praise God. And, and we could see that on display today. As we uh, 
bring Sabbath morning's worship uh, experience to a uh, halt, we just want to remind you, brothers and sisters, that we have Pathfinder induction. When, Maddie? I'm pretty sure it's four today. You will see our wonderful children change their clothes very quickly. We will be in our Pathfinder uniform. Drum Corps and Color Guard will be up here, and we have a wonderful service for you. Everyone. Yes, and if you think this morning was good, I have seen them preparing for induction, and you don't want to miss that. Mm -hmm. And so I'm inviting all of you to come out and to support our Pathfinders, our children and youth, in their induction service this afternoon as as. Maddie said they're going to be in their uniforms and they're again going to be leading from the front wearing different hats. Also want to uh, remind you or correct an error I made earlier that the New England South Singles Worship and Mingle is the 4th of May, not the 6th of April. So again, thank you so much for those online. If you feel compelled by the Spirit to share that link with someone who needed this message that you got today, mm. do not hesitate to like, subscribe, and share the link. Pass the message along. Don't let Rahab outdo you <laughs> in evangelism. Be a digital disciple. Share the link thanks to our visitors in-house. Those online do have a wonderful rest of the Sabbath, and the Lord bless you richly. Happy, happy Sabbath. Happy Sabbath.